Chef Pennington here. Today we're going to do something fantastic. We're going to make chicken parmesan, but we're going to add some amazing flavors to it. We're going to make it into a whole new dish. We're going to make a wonderful Roja sauce, which is a South American dish, well, salsa really, that we've turned into a sauce that has got more flavor than any tomato sauce we've ever used with chicken parm before. And we're going to take the chicken breast and we're going to stuff it with everybody's favorite, pepperoni. So I've got some vine ripened tomatoes there. You can really use whatever you guys want. The one suggestion I would have is don't use Roma tomatoes. They just don't have enough flavor. I mean, they're good in a pinch, but we're making a special sauce. So let's don't. We're going to use some San Marzano tomatoes, which are considered the best in the world. They come from Italy. They just, they're sweeter. They have a little bit less acidity, but the flavor profile is like all tomato. It's really amazing. We've got some Wahio chilies right here. They can be a little bit hot. They're not as hot as a jalapeno. You can see right there. They're just one notch below, which really makes them really ideal. Because the jalapeno, once you take out the rib and the seed and the stem in there, it really isn't that hot. It can be, but it's one way to tone down the heat. So right there, we're taking out the seeds. That's the hot part. You guys want to make this sauce extra hot, keep the seeds in there. But I want the flavor. I don't really want the heat. So we're going with two Wahio chilies. Here's some Fresno chilies. Now, a way to tell if a chili's hot, I've told you all this before, is you look at the stems. The one on the, the left there, the stem kind of broke off, but it was a much straighter stem, and then the other one's got the curve. So when you're shopping at the store, it's one of the ways to tell if the pepper's really hot. Well, I've got one other cool tip for you about telling how hot the pepper is. When you look at the pepper, if they have what they call heat streaks, it's kind of where there's a line or a few lines that are running down it, it almost looks like it's trying to dry a little bit on like a jalapeno. Those are the extra, extra hot ones. So if it's a curved stem, has that, you're playing with fire at that point, which might be exactly what you want. And that's the whole point of that tip. It's kind of fun. So with the garlic, leave the peels on. It's going to help make sure that it doesn't burn. And I'm also using a cast iron skillet, which really holds its heat really well. It's not required, but if you have a cast iron, it's a really good time to pull it out. I've got a Vidalia onion in there, just a little salt just to get everything going. And we're going to stick it into a 375 degree oven and we're going to go until everything's roasted really nice. This time I went for about 30 minutes. I usually like going a little bit longer. I got my timing off a little bit, just to be honest. So closer to 40, 45 minutes is what I like. So let's prepare some chicken. We're using chicken breast today. The reason we're using chicken breast is because it's big enough for us to stuff. And that's usually how it goes if you want to stuff. You could do some other things, but chicken breast is where it's at. And we're going to make it juicy and delicious. So just look at your chicken breast. Make sure it doesn't have little pieces of fat that are in the wrong spot. So I cut that one off. So you'll notice here, one side is curved. The other is a little flatter. So at the flatter side, we're going to start cutting in here. And my, I'm using my left hand right there. I can feel where the knife is. We're not going all the way through. Don't be in a hurry. And notice I'm cutting a little bit back towards me on my last cut, just really trying to open it up like a book or butterflying it is what we've done there. We're going to take some plastic wrap. And when you put, we're going to pound it out. So what we're going to do. When you put it in here, you want to have a little bit of room on the edge because it's going to grow a little bit in size as we're pounding it. So that's why I redid that there. See that little bit of spot on the left side? Because I didn't know how big it was going to end up, you know? Each piece of chicken's a little bit different. Just make sure when you use your mallet, don't use the edge that has the sharp part. Sorry, that was a little out of focus there. Otherwise, this is going to mutilate the chicken, and that's not what we're trying to do. So we're pounding it out to give ourselves more surface area to put our delicious pepperoni in. So pretty much go to whatever you want. I'm thinking about this not being too thin. So don't overpound it. And one other cool thing is happening there is we're tenderizing the chicken, which is who doesn't want tender chicken, right? So with clean hands, make sure your hands are clean. I did wash my hands there. Give yourself a little bit of salt. Here's your one chance to season the inside of the chicken. And then we're going to use some sliced pepperoni. You guys could use salami or something else if you really wanted to, but I personally love pepperoni. You probably do too if you're here watching this with me. Like, honestly, I like buying little packets of pepperoni at the grocery store now and keeping them in my refrigerator and munching on them. I recently found turkey pepperoni, and I mean it. I almost can't tell the difference. I know it sounds crazy saying that. H-E-B brand, it's so good. I almost can't tell the difference. I'm serious. Like, I'm almost thinking about buying it exclusively since it has a little bit less fat. So get as much pepperoni in there as you can, 
and we're going to roll it up like a cigar. Now we need to do one there step. We need to put some toothpicks in there because we don't want it to fall apart while we're cooking it. We are going to put this in a skillet and baste it a little bit to give it a little bit of a head start before the oven. So I'm going to use four here. You could just use three. Pretty sure I used four just to really make sure that last pepperoni, I don't want them to fall out. All right. So I'm getting some really good butter in there. Y'all know I love using quality butter. Kerrygold is the one I like. I'm not paid to say that, but I just really do like their butter. We're going to melt that down, add a little bit of olive oil. The olive oil is going to help make sure that the butter doesn't burn. Butter has milk solids in it, and those milk solids will burn. And that's why people clarify butter. Clarified butter means that there's no milk solids. I'll put a link below. I did an article and a video on how to clarify butter and make ghee which really cool stuff. You might be doing lobster or some seafood soon. You want to do it. So I got a video for you. So I'm putting the seam side down first just to give us a little bit of a start. And we're going to try to seal up and help. I mean, we use the toothpick, so we're good. But putting this, the seam side down is going to help with presentation because some of those pepperonis are still poking their heads out just a little bit. And that's actually nice. We like, we like seeing that. So based for a while, what we're looking for here is just to get a little bit of color on it before we go in the oven because we can't baste it while it's in the oven. And you'll see right there, we got some cool, nice color. Now, my video you know, presents one color in the real world. The golden brown part was actually much more noticeable. And there's little pieces of pepperoni. You can see they're kind of on the left side, and it's crunchy, delicious bits of pepperoni. So chicken parmesan, guys, we're taking it to a wholly, totally different level. We've added pepperoni, which everybody loves, and we're about to make a Roja sauce, a Mexican South American sauce that you guys can put on a whole lot of different stuff. Really pop in the oven, cook it till it's done. It's about eight to 10 minutes. Depends on how thick your chicken is. All right, we roasted this stuff up. Like I said, I went 30 minutes. I would suggest going longer. I got my timing a little bit off. You can see that the tomatoes there are starting to wilt. And if you let it go longer, that roasting process intensifies the flavor so that's where letting it go longer is to your advantage so that's the wahia chili it's been roasted into the microwave we want to get it soft and that's the reason we put it in the microwave for a little bit now after you put everything into the blender we're going to blend it all up together with the wahio chili keep the liquid you might want the sauce to be a little bit thinner probably not i've never needed to do that making the sauce but that liquid in that this, this glass right here that's pure flavor so something to think about. You might even repurpose it for something else. But we want to get all those chilies in there. You can tell that they're soft. It only took three minutes. This is my Ninja Blender. I really like. My parents gave that to me for Christmas a few years ago. Get all that delicious garlic in there. The reason I like the Ninja Blender is it, it has blades like all the way up. It's not just at the bottom. So when you're trying to do a, a real job, this is an easy job for a blender. But it just chops everything up amazingly. I do sell stuff, so I'll put a link down in the description if you guys wanted to get one of these cool Ninja Blenders. They're fairly inexpensive these days. But look at the color, guys. Those little black bits you can see in there, that's the Wahia chili. That's what really makes this tomato sauce, I'm going to go there, better than most tomato sauces, and the addition of the San Marzano tomatoes, the best tomatoes in the world. You might be wondering, where do I get those? Well, in a pinch, if you can't get them fresh, you can get them nowadays at the grocery store. They're always selling them nowadays, that brand... Uh, Cento, S-E-N-T-O, they do a very nice uh, San Marzano and organic too. So here we go, guys. There is our chicken, 2B chicken parmesan. So make sure you get those little buggers out. You don't want to keep the toothpicks in there. It's definitely not good eats. And let's do a little reveal. Let's take a look on the inside. Let's see what all this pepperoni business did for us. You can see it cut through like butter, which is what we want. And we have... A flavor bomb hanging out in the middle. I mean, doesn't that look good, guys? It really is, and it's super easy. It came together very quickly. The only thing it really took time was roasting off the sauce. And that's something you could really do the day before, or even the two days before, because it's the type of sauce that's only going to get better as it sets up in your refrigerator. And it has all kinds of good uses. You guys can make like huevos ranchero, which in the article link below, I've got a little link out to a great recipe for huevos ranchero which is a delicious mexican dish if you guys don't know what huevos is that just means eggs 
with its nice tomato sauce and there's usually a little bit of black beans and some crispy tortilla. Um, it's just amazing. So I use some Gouda cheese. I really like Gouda and that happened to be smoked Gouda cheese. So I'm like, we're playing with flavor here today's guys. So, and that's some delicious Parmesan on top. So that's going to help us with our presentation and flavor, it's salty deliciousness. Just let it go until you're done. Like whatever you think your appropriate melting point is. And you guys are going to have the most amazing thing ever. Please come join us on social media. We would love to have you guys over there. The recipe link and all the information step-by-step -step with pictures will be in below. And you guys have the best. Take care.